episode. Bye. The uh, the the bigger animal chasing down the other male, was trying to get the female. Right. Well, let's just say that the other animals wouldn't bother if they knew that that um, female was taken already by the bigger male. By default, let's say the bigger male always wins. Well, rather than having to fight to see who wins, just presume that, you know, the bigger one's going to win. Um, you've got a ring on that buffalo. Don't bother. So the ring to me symbolizes that person is taken, even though there's legal shit behind it. It probably goes back in the day where to symbolize this person is mine. So don't bother. Um, but the point I'm making is that you can, as you said, call these people husbands because to you, a husband is that deep connection, right? You've locked that connection in and it doesn't need to be paper behind the ring, whether it's a piece of string on your finger, some key ring from your keys, it's irrelevant. And if you say my husband, people aren't probably going to say, well, did you legally get that done? They'll just accept the fact that husband, no one's going to question like, you know, they might say, well, would you get married? And it's like, oh, more questions down the line, you know, <laughs> um, but I've never heard that before, calling people husbands or wives without the paperwork, because that, that's very interesting, because there is no rules. It is what you want it to be. And oh. um, I love that. Yeah. Doesn't matter what's why on the are, finger. Good. Why are people so upset when you, you, you know, when you when you bust a system or you get outside of a system and you do something in a different way? Why are they so upset? I think it is because cognitive, cognitive dissonance, which you probably know, is a theory around feeling like you're being jarred out of a sleep and it's uncomfortable. It's that I don't want to be, see myself as wrong or I don't want to see myself as obtuse. I want you to do what I'm doing so that I can feel naturalized and normal. And that's a somewhat selfish way to look at the world if everybody has to do it my way so I feel good. That, you know, I need to feel good because I feel good in like manner. That's why men sometimes in our culture don't want women to have multiple partners because then they, they, they don't have a way to prove their manhood. Sometimes a man's manhood is built upon what I do with my vagina. Now, why would you build a, your manhood around what I'm doing with my vagina? That's a bad idea because I might do something different with my vagina any time of the day. And you then your manhood topples. Why? Why? That's not. That's not a sound logic. And men supposed to be so damn logical. I don't see the logic in that. But don't build your identity around what I'm doing with my body. That's that that that, that, that that's the cognitive dissonance that men feel when I say I'm going to have multiple partners. But the other part of this is that I've done this since 2005. So this is my 17th year coaching couples all around the world, moving from monogamy to polyamory. And, and, and what happens is on the threads, on social media, I watch every year the comments get better and better because I'm resolving the cognitive dissonance. That's my job this lifetime and this planet. So when I put up a post in 2005, it may cut, slut, whore, bitch, stop, don't do it. We hate you. And then 2007, it's Okay, then 2009, it's, you know, it, it's lighter and lighter every year as I'm matriculating this energy into the community. That's my job. That's my goddess force. And so I understood the negative comments. I understand cognitive dissonance. It's not against me. It is like being asleep and somebody pour water on you and you wake up. You just want to go back to sleep and you want to be dry. You don't want that. You don't want to be in the waking up right now, especially with hot, hot or cold water. So, you know, I always understand where people are coming from when they have negative comments about this lifestyle. Yeah, and any, um, every, anything that people project out of their mouth or brain is a reflection of what's in their brain. So they're giving out negative comments and negative stuff. That's their own thoughts. It's like if, if you're taught Indian language, you're going to speak Indian. You're not going to speak Chinese. And if you speak, if you speak Chinese, you're you're going to come out with Chinese, not going to speak Indian, right? So again, understanding why people are like that is the key in life. Because in life, you're going to be amongst so many religions, so many politic laws and politic whatever you want to call it. So belief systems and there's so much shit out there that unless you have empathy and already understand why that person is thinking like that, you're going to be trapped for the rest of your life because everywhere you go you're expecting things to be blue and that's pink that's orange that's yellow that's green that's red that's pink and every day you're going to try and work out and try and understand why why is that not pink it's supposed to be pink for the rest of your life right um 
And because we're all going this huge metaverse of everything is one and everything is the same, there's so many religions, so many laws, so many species. If you're a regular listener, you'll have heard me talk about crypto and how it's the future. I've learned from all my mistakes through trial and error since 2015, and I never make a mistake twice. I was going round in circles investing small amounts that I decided just to trust my intuition and go for it properly with big money. And so I borrowed £7,000 on the credit cards, which was a massively ballsy move, which I would tell no one to do, and got my balance up to 35 k in two months. So I've decided to set up a Discord group where I will inform the group when I'm placing my trade and what coin I'm trading so you can copy me if you wish. I compound my balance but you can trade with whatever amount you can afford to lose. I trust myself and my system enough to trade with a million pounds which I will do one day soon but that's me. You're in control whether you copy me or don't. There is no fee. Join my Discord group to receive real-time notifications when I trade. Link is in the podcast description. Whether you join or not I will still be trading. The only difference is you can do too she's so many breeds it's just a big mess so many types of food everything's becoming like a big bowl of bollocks right and then um, the only way to save yourself from, from 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 sanity is to already understand and anticipate what the other person is going to be doing so you don't react to it based on what you think it should be right 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 i love it i love the metaverse right now and i feel like what you said is important in understanding that big g- g- glob of what's happening is empathy i mean this is the perfect time to learn empathy and one of the concepts that i support with people who are becoming polyamorous is you don't just start having sex with other people to become polyamorous the first thing you have to learn is a new framework for communication uh you have to learn what empathy means a lot of times people talk about empathy and i say oh well how do you be empathetic and they don't have a practical application as to how to do that in my book up level communication I show people practically what does empathy mean. And so they get to practice saying it and being empathetic rather than just saying, I'd like to be empathetic. So one of the, you know, one of the key pieces to polyamory and and, and, and cultivating yourself enough to live that lifestyle is really uh, changing three pillars, your communication system, your understanding around the purpose of relationships and your understanding around the purpose of sex. And I want to talk about sex, Oliver, because I never knew, I never knew that the more variety I could have guilt-free, the higher my libido would become. The less variety that I had and with guilt, more guilt, the less my libido would become. Now that I can have sex with whomever I choose, whenever I choose, not that I would or wouldn't, it's just I have the choice and I don't have guilt surrounding that choice. My libido is skyrocket, but then so is my creativity, but then so is my personal power, but then so is my ability to to connect. It's it's so many things tied up in what is libido. And and, and, and it's almost like becoming a superhuman. So then we think about, well, does, is there some conspiracy to keep people from being superhumans? Because that is what sex creates, superhumans. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, everything in life is created by sex, the attraction to mate, that feeling of being magnetically drawn to somebody that turns you on so much that you have to release this feeling in seven seconds, right? And then you pump it out and it's done. Life is created. That's the purpose. And everyone wonders why they have a shit libido. They're stressed at work. They're unhappy. Their boss is a twat. The kids are doing their head in. The house is a mess. They're trying to move another house. They've got a cook. Husbands are pain in the ass. No one's communicating. No one says how they feel. And all of these things you say, libido is not just sex. It's everything about everything is everything, right? And when people just continue going down those patterns and not really understanding what is my happiness and what is sex, like the deeper level of sex, like it starts from a back tickle. Like to me, part of the sex is the back tickle. And it's like the, the touching and just staring at the other person. Then if they do anything, just stare at them, right? Everything, that is libido. That is from starting a car, don't have to drive it anywhere, start the car, let it sit on the driveway for a bit and just breathe in those fumes. And then you can just take off three hours later when you want to, don't have to put your foot right on the gas. You can put it just slightly on the gas, right? And then just 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 simmer and go. And um, as you say, 
when we realize how powerful sex is to the body, flood of serotonin, dopamine, your blood, your heart, your breath, your, your eyesight, your brain, everything comes from sex, right? And so when you connect with that person in so many other ways, everything, your, 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 your um, appetite comes back, right? <laughs> your taste might come back. It's all connected. It's the tr- reboot of your body. It's the starter of life. And um, you look at people and just how their libido's low and they're just depressed and just always unhappy. I wouldn't want to have sex with me if I was like that because there's just nothing to, there's no car, there's no key, there's no engine. It's just, it's the power of life. It does everything. As you say, it raises creativity. You start getting ideas because you feel good. When you feel good, you start thinking, hmm, wonder what other kinks and shit that I can deal with or role plays and what it would be a doctor nurse role play. Then you start thinking about going on Amazon to getting a doctor nurse outfit. And then you think, oh, look, there's a Superman outfit. So you start getting the Superman outfit and all of a sudden creativity is just going berserk. And then you're like, oh, let's go to a party. Let's go to a dungeon, right? And before you know it, you go into another country to a specific dungeon. And then the journey with your partner to the other country from the airport, getting in the taxi, eating at the airport, checking into the hotel, it's all part of the process. Before you know it, three weeks of your life has been on a massive high just doing that. Right. Whereas you look at standard life, going to work, coming home, putting the kids to bed, shitty life. Yeah. You know, when I support couples, that's my primary job, job. But when I support couples who have been married 20 years or more, moving from monogamy to polyamory, they are in shock when their libido starts to go back up, not even from having sex, but from the thought that they can have a guilt-free sex life that doesn't just include their husband or wife. Just the thought, not the, the, the brain does not know the difference between what we imagine and what actually happened. So I have my couple start to imagine coming home and being able to, as you say, share and talk about this. And I have them role play these conversations. Then just the thought uh, 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 elicits the same hormonal cocktail and they start to have a different sex life together and a different outlook on life. I mean, it is incredible what these couples go through and what they fear or uh, uh, what they feel that they've missed out on. They, they start to cry. Because, wow, we could have done this at year 10. Then we wouldn't have had this struggle, this financial struggle. Your sex is connected to your finances. And we wouldn't have had this financial struggle. We wouldn't have been so angry with the kids. We wouldn't have been so emotional. I mean, polyamory, this is uh, 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 like sex. We think of it as a tip of an iceberg. It is a tip of an iceberg concept. It's the part that sticks out from the water. But when you look deep under what does polyamory mean, what would it mean to the human species? You are looking at an entirely different world, a different financial world, a world where big corporate doesn't have the hierarchy, possessiveness, ugliness, where we're protecting each other, where there's no poverty. You're looking at a different set of humans when you're talking about humans who understand the power of sexual, spiritual power of sexuality and connection and community rather than the isolated nuclear family that has failed. Okay, if I come home with the 55% on the test, that means I failed. Modern marriage has failed its citizens and we still are teaching people to want it and to do it in the same way. It's a sad state of affairs, but a happy one because I get to be alive and shift it. So I see my goddess powers is fun. Um, so it's like if 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 a dog whines um, for a biscuit and you keep giving him a biscuit, he's going to whine again. You give him a biscuit, he's going to whine again. You give him a biscuit. The minute you tell that dog you're not having a damn biscuit, he's going to go and sulk in its bed. So he's not going to think about a biscuit and how crunchy it tastes and how sweet the biscuit is because he's not going to get it. Someone who's told that they can't have sex with anybody ever again because he married to this boring old shit. And then you don't have sex. So you think, well, I'm not going to have any sex anyway. So I'm thinking about it because I'm going to get stimulated by it. I might get turned on by it. I might get frustrated to the fact that I'm not getting it. I'm not going to think about it. So therefore, you just don't think about it. So then all of a sudden you have these couples or these people who you're telling them to fantasize about your where would you have sex or what things would you do with your partner? Who would you do it with? What outfits would you wear? Give me some ideas about how you would do it what turns you on clamps on your nipples right tell me maybe anal sex turns you on your brain's firing up you're feeling stuff you're getting turned on when we dream 
guys can have an orgasm and come in their sleep and they're not even even erect right what does that say the brain can just do the same thing by itself so then you get your clients to imagine all this shit it's like it's real they don't even need to go and fuck anybody because they're doing it in their brain right they're doing it in their own head but it's about activating that part of the brain which has been dead for so long that now they're on that frequency thinking about things related to that. So now they can go out and do that shit and they're already prepared. It's like if you imagine what you're going to say to somebody at a club when you do it in real time, you're not nervous. You've already done it. Um, but if you're told that you've got to be with one person forever and you can't be with anybody else and your partner's not having sex with you, you're not even going to think about sex because you're not going to get it. Why would you frustrate yourself? I say it like this. Why would you think about, why would you go and test drive a Lamborghini if you're not going to have it? Now, you might say, well, you know, power of the mind, whatever. But the point is this. Don't tempt yourself for something you're never going to have. If you simply are homeless, right? <laughs> no point going to test a Lamborghini or anything, you know, um, if, you're, if you're not going to have it. You know what I mean? Not the law of attraction way, but don't tease yourself with something you're not going to get. I don't want to even go in the Lamborghini, right? I'm not yeah. going to start thinking about all these sexual ideas if my husband isn't going to do it with me. So you don't bother. But actually, that's the wrong thing. Because if you start thinking about that, you'll start wanting it. And eventually, you'll open your mouth and say to your husband, tie me up. And he'll be like, sorry, I want you to tie me up. And then all of a sudden, you realise you've missed out on 10 years worth of sex because you didn't open your mouth and say, tie me up. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> boom, you've got so much fun in the bedroom. <laughs> and it's so funny that you said that. I have a few things to say about that, but that that entire piece about one, uh, uh, embracing your desires and and knowing that they're not negative. No, my desires, I embrace them because I know they're going to lead me to my next growth opportunity. And so, you know, that is where we go in with my clients. But it's so funny that you said that a dog is not going to think about that biscuit. He's going to suppress that thought. He's going to suppress that, right? But what happens to uh, something? I thought that. Is suppressed. In my view, the suppression in our society that is mandatory to exist in the climate that we've created uh, creates the perversion. So if I suppress my sexuality so much down here, I have to molest someone. I have to deal with a child, a children. I have to deal with uh, all of the sexual perversions, rape, for instance. If, if I suppress the fact that I, I'm an exhibitionist, I want people to look at my dick. I want people to see my dick, but I'm not doing it. I, I, I won't put myself into a club or a party where people are looking at dicks. You know, there are parties like this. And so, <laughs> they're called play parties, right? So I won't go there because that's bad. That's wrong. I'm going to suppress that, but then I'm going to show my uh, 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 unsuspecting women my dick at the office. Now I'm going to get fired. Why am I going to suppress that rather than embracing that desire that I'm an exhibitionist? I want to be looked at. Personally, I'm an exhibitionist. I'm a voyeur. I want to be looked at and I want to look at others. So I put myself in those environments where I can have that experience. And even that would be enough for me. Even if I was monogamous, quote unquote, maybe I would just want that. <laughs> so that's a way that we can solve these concerns with couples as well and cut out on the major perversions that hurt our children and hurt people in this in in our society and this goes back this relates directly to addiction i don't believe that that there's any obviously there is some substances like say crack or opioid that has such a chemical a, a effect on the body that you you can't don't have any control even though the brain chooses to give in but any addiction it's about thinking and not having the power to not apply action to that thought right so if you want to as you said walk around showing off your dick in a club right if you go to say a kink party where you're doing it so much is that your system you don't have that need to do it anymore it's out your system so you won't then just go and find a person in the street and flash them right so if you suppress any thought it's still there right if uh, if i think about um chinese i often go to the takeaway and get one if i don't think about it it doesn't exist and if i tell myself oh no can't have that it's uh, not healthy or it happened last week I just think about it more, right? The act of thinking about something and being told not to do it makes you think about it more. So now I've got two thoughts of eating Chinese in my head, not just one. So, so I realize the only way to get those two thoughts out is to go to the Chinese twice, fulfill that fulfillment of having that pot of Chinese that I've done it. And then eventually three weeks passes and I might get another thought again. Suppressing any thought only stays inside you. And like, um, like a plant, if you put a seed in the ground, it becomes 
two you know it becomes a tree there's three seeds on that tree now they've got nine trees and you've got fucking nine times three you've got 18 fucking trees and all you get to do was just go to the kink party flash your cock out get out of your system and then go home to your wife right <laughs> <laughs> so so suppressing anything is very bad an addiction for me is simply not being able to control your thoughts because you're trying to stop those compulsions and thoughts stop drinking stop smoking stop watching porn you have to smoke have to drink you have to watch porn to know that eventually you don't want to be doing this so you do it enough until you kind of reach a point where you kind of feel guilty any doctor will say you never just stop drinking alcohol when you want to come off alcohol you've got to go down slowly come off medication you can't just come off it so you want to stop porn stop drinking stop smoking stop for sex you can't just stop because you want to you've got to get out of your system but knowing there's like 37th thought down the line after your 36 thoughts of I've got to have a Chinese takeaway that that will be nope remember after all these thoughts you were going to stop now but it'll be a natural process where you don't feel the need to have Chinese you just won't think about it anymore rather than trying to stop all these thoughts go to the club flash your dick get out of your system stare at a cock stare at a vagina until you just can't be asked anymore and then done that's so good. Another thing that uh, couples who do come to me around wanting to become polyamorous from monogamy, that's another thing we have to do is explore their traumas. You know, so I say that polyamory is a whole spiritual walk. It is not about, oh, I'm going to go have sex. It is really about, for me personally, I had to explore my trauma. So for instance, if I grow up with the father, which this is my actual story, I grew up with a father who was angry at my mother because my mom was so dominant. And so it made him to be so um, uh, um, submissive. And so he just had to give up his identity and everything. So he was angry at the feminine, angry at her. So to get her back, he would ignore us kids because he knew my mom wanted him to father us and parent us. And so he could passive aggressively not parent us and not even pay any attention to us, not even look at us. And that would get her goat. And that was the only boxing gloves that he had to get to her. So I had to like work on my ability to receive male attention. Because I felt like men don't give me attention. Men don't pay attention to me. Men don't, men ignore me. So, I, you know, I help the couples dig into those traumas as well that have stopped their flow of sexuality for whatever reason. It may not be the marriage fault that you are not doing what you want sexually. It may be a childhood trauma. And once we clear that up, then you can be authentic with your partner and say, wow, this is what I actually want. I didn't know it was buried beneath a trauma. So there's a lot of things that we do here at Progressive Love Academy to support people as they move to polyamory. <laughs> and that's the thing, right? A lot, a lot of poly people I find do have trauma because when you think about what is monogamy, it's things staying the same forever. So you've got somebody who's growing up with a broken home. They're told that you're supposed to be together forever, marriage, love your mom and dad, whatever, but it's split. So now you've seen something that should be something, but it isn't. So now you're not going to be able to follow that pattern because it's simply nonsense. So you can say that's trauma. You, you, you had your parents fighting and arguing, trying to keep it together, and then they just end up splitting up in the end. Well, what, what is poly? Well, that, that doesn't exist here, poly, because if it was going to shit, you'd just simply walk away. So a lot of poly people do have trauma because they've seen a, a pattern that wasn't nice. And then when you understand you know, what these patterns were, they're probably based on false ideologies of what those patterns should have been in the first place which again is simply man-made and nonsense and so Polly is basically saying it is what it is when I'm there I'm there when I want a Chinese dick I'm there when I want a black dick I'm there English dick I'm there there's no rules I can flow when I want I'm with that person if they're a prick I'm gonna walk away I'll be with that person you know what I mean there's <laughs> Rule. We, say, we have a saying that rules are for fools. So we, I teach my clients how to get out of rule making in polyamory. And we deal more with a, a, a protocol, which is not a rule at all. It's a something you choose to learn a lesson. So if I want to become more considerate, then I can create a protocol for myself that would lend to me being considerate toward you. But I'm not going to have my clients make up rules and you have to be here and you cannot do this because these rules are based on their ego and their animal, their fears. <laughs> so that keeps us inside of the Western thought conundrum. And it does not allow us to get outside of the matrix into polyamory. Where polyamory lives is outside of the Western matrix. <laughs> 
Right, let's wrap it up there. Anything you want to promote? Absolutely. You can find me at Progressive Love Academy on Instagram or go to progressiveloveacademy.com where I run an online academy, the best in the world for polyamory and preparation, security, safety, and polyamory. Right, wait there. I'm going to press stop. Hey, y'all, if you've made it to the end of listening to my podcast, would you mind rating me and leaving a review? And if you want to see what I get up to in my days off, then follow me on Instagram. It's yes, King Oliver. Bye.